wonderful and creative people out there. This is Kevin from CC Pipe, where we focus on productivity and pipelining for creatives. And today's tutorial is based on the concept of basing styles and master pages on each other. And what does that mean? Well, when styles or masters in, for example, in design uh, share properties, you can base them on each other. And it more or less creates this uh, parent children relation where the based style will inherit properties from the parent. And doing this means you don't need to set up the same properties or guides and so forth more than once. And also if they change, you can change it all for them at once. And if you set things up correctly, you could, for example, change the font for all the styles in a big document with plenty of text with just a couple of clicks. Just imagine how annoying it would be to go into, say, 20 plus different paragraph styles and change the same font setting over and over again. With master pages, however, it's a bit different, but the principle is the same. There the child inherits all the objects and guides of the parent. So let's take a look at this in InDesign. And uh, by the way, Microsoft Word styles also support basing styles on each other. So that part's applicable over there as well. Back in InDesign. And uh, now I thought I'd show you this in two sections. And uh, first I'll show you how I like to think when setting up based styles and masters. And uh, then since it's probably quite boring watching me set all that up, I'll jump into an example where we can utilize and make changes with a finished setup. Here we have quite an empty document and uh, let's start with the masters. And uh, I recommend starting from the bottom and working our way up, so to speak. And uh, meaning we start with the basics and uh, that almost all pages will have in common. And uh, I'll jump over here and name this base and uh, jump into the master itself. Now, what do I want on all masters? Well, usually I want the guides and margins set up and I'm happy with my margins, but let's make some guides. And a tip is to make your guides on a separate layer, by the way. And uh, that way you can toggle it and even make different versions if you can't decide. And uh, I don't know, something like that will do. It's only an example after all. Okay, now we have something to base the rest on. And uh, if I make a new master over here, let's call this one Pagination. And uh, importantly, choose to base it on the base we just made. And uh, moving into this master, we now see the guides from the base, but we can't access them from here since they are inherited. And uh, now that we are on the level down, perhaps things like page numbers would be appropriate. I uh, put those over here, so let me just go and get those. And uh, right, and other things we might want here could be footers, headers, etc. It will of course depend on how many levels we want and how complex our proje project is going to be. And I personally think three levels are quite nice. For styles, I like to kind of apply the same principle. I like making a base of my own. You could just use the basic paragraph as well. And uh, there are set things like font family, hyphenation rules, and uh, language that will be applicable on the, most of the things. Then I like having a body text and main heading based on that. And in practice, this is how you do it. You just make a new style. And under general, just choose to base it on a style over here. Right, so let me just move over to our finished version. Like I said, I like to have a base, then a body and heading based on it. Then I'll usually base other headings on the main one. But of course, it's really up to you how much you want and need to nestle these and uh, how many levels you want. And a big difference from the master is that based styles can be overridden. For example, the H1 here is the base of all the underlying headings. But if I go and change this to, well, go in here and uh, say bold, that will, of course, carry over to the other styles as well, at least if you haven't already changed that. But I can now go in and just change it back in H2 over here. And you see that it's bold, but it still allows us to change it back. To get a better overview of overrides, etc., we can go to the general tab. And uh, here we see all the changes made from the parent. However, if we were to change this to no paragraph style, we could see that a lot more appears. And that's, of course, because it's a lot more different from the no paragraph style than the previous parent. That's enough talk, though. Hopefully you got the idea. And uh, I think we just finish off with the promised demonstration. Now, this document uses all these styles and several different masters. Now, let's go into the base style and uh, change the font to Proxima Nova instead. And we just press OK. 
and now all styles are using the new font. Beautiful. And uh, similarly, let's go into the base master. We now want just columns and not grid for all our masters. Well, we'll just set it up here. We can go create guides and uh, four columns and uh, six millimeter spacing. And uh, remember to replace the old ones. And uh, there we go. Now we've just changed our guides on all masters at the same time. Very neat. And that's all folks, just some final advice. If you're like me, it can be tempting to base everything on everything, thinking that it's the ultimate most optimized document setup ever. But seriously, don't overcomplicate simple documents. It will just take more time than it needs to. And uh, believe me, I know. That said, when used correctly, it sure can be a pretty useful thing. Thank you so much for watching and uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It helps me out a lot. And also if you have any productivity questions or suggestions for future videos, make sure to throw those in the comments below. Once again, thank you and until next time, have a good one.